Good afternoon, fellow radio enthusiasts. Today I wanted to have a look at the DMR radios that have the GPS function built into them, specifically the radios from China, and two brands that I've been looking at, the Anytone DP468, which is their first digital dual band radio, and then we've got the TYT MD390 that's got the GPS function built in. Both are quite different radios in some respects and they share other features. So we're going to go through that and we're going to compare how the GPS functions and works with an inReach device which you can see in front of us here and give that a, a shot because I've found so far in my very limited experience with the radios I wasn't getting the accuracy that I would need in order to find someone if they had gone down into a tree well or they had simply wandered into the bush in that case I could probably get within yelling distance of them but uh, it would be nicer to get it so we're gonna give that a try and see how that works and see how they compare some of this will be uh, experimental for me as well so you'll have to excuse me if I sound even more confused than I normally am. Let's start with what I started with which was these two in the middle and that's the Anytone. We got these from Anytone right they were so brand new that we had to wait a couple of weeks and it delayed our entire radio order for the Anytone 3318 and um, so they came with the uh, few bugs in them that these have and I'll go through those and then we'll move on to the TYT which is what I'm holding out more hopes for so first of all let's talk about uh, some of the differences so the Anytone which is the one on your left as opposed to the TYT the Anatone is a dual band. The TYT is one or the other. You can get it VHF or you can get it UHF. Because of the nature of what we do, I just concentrate on VHF radios. The only thing we have that uh, needs UHF are some sledders that sometimes have a use for that frequency. So, on the Anytone, what distinguishes it that it does do that the TYT doesn't is it has an up-end alarm on it which caught my attention. And how that works is, is you can actually set the tilt angle that you want to trigger the alarm. And, uh, for example, you could have it trigger about there or, as I've done, somewhere around there. The idea behind that was if a skier goes into a tree well, he will trigger the alarm to everybody else in the group. A message gets sent out to the other radios and that message identifies the radio that has gone down and sends out the GPS coordinates. That has to be done in digital mode. If you are on an analog channel, then all it will do is send an alarm out and your co-workers or your uh, fellow skiers will just know someone has gone into a tree well out of the entire group. So you would think, well, in that case, the digital's got to be the way to go. Well, what we found when we're in digital was that a few times the message was all in Chinese characters um, but then you could reboot and quite often probably figure out a way to keep it consistently sending the message out in English. However, then the problem was was that the timeout screen, the maximum time you can get on a timeout for any one screen is 30 seconds and you have to scroll from one screen to the next screen in order to get the GPS coordinates. 
So that means in the winter, if you've got to take your glove off and get your notebook out in order to write down the GPS coordinates, it's not terribly convenient. Maybe you will, with practice, master that skill and you'll get the GPS coordinates written down. When I then put those coordinates into various software packages from Google Earth to uh, the mapping program on my phone, it really got me nowhere. I couldn't understand where it was showing me. Uh, one of the things that I could gather was that these use the Beidou, and excuse my pronunciation, the Beidou GPS system, which is what the Chinese government has been developing and which apparently holds great promise for the future. And it is currently in use with a, a more limited s subset of satellites than it'll eventually have, say, even next year. Um, so that I gave up on it uh, as well when I noticed that if you jiggled it a lot, I haven't actually skied with it yet, but if you um, shake it up and down, it will sound the alarm. And I thought, well, if you're aggressively skiing, uh, is it going to sound the alarm then as well? Which would be pretty inconvenient. The first thing you're going to need in your radio is to have a common channel programmed in that is digital with the GPS functions enabled on it. So in my radios I have one for myself and one for Sharon. And on Sharon's radio, which is this one, she knows to grab the red one and if she wants to call me, and uh, as you may have guessed my name is John, um, she knows who she's calling. She might have a few other boyfriends or spouses that I'm unaware of and so this way it's possible for her to keep them straight. She can even have a zone dedicated to all her male friends if she would so choose. However, because I don't have any friends, male or female, I have the channel and because I'm not that bright, I called it Sharon and I know that's who I can call. Again, it's programmed in digitally on both radios. It's channel 10. And you can see the other icons on the top there. Um, you can see the little globe, which with the little, I don't know if you can make it out. The um, can't really focus that close with the little red arrow saying that the GPS is not. Got a view of the satellites. So then what you're going to do in order to query the other radio is you would go into the menu system and you would scroll down and you get to utilities and then you go into RX GPS info and if you can't see the satellites, it will tell you that it's not picking anything up. Then, if you go up to GPS Baidu info, that's what you're going to get when you also don't have any satellites. So, now the trick is uh, to take one outside and let it acquire satellites and then see if we can pull it. So I've taken Sharon outside and you can see her enjoying a coffee out there at the picnic table and uh, I'm just gonna wait for her to acquire some satellites and then see if I can query her. I shouldn't have much trouble reaching that distance but I'm nice and warm inside, about to pull a shot of some espresso. So the method from this point forward to query Sharon's radio and get the GPS coordinates is fairly straightforward. 
you're in the main screen, you hit the menu button once, you hit it twice, you hit it three times, you go to the contact that you want to query, and once again you hit that same one, and then you go to option number six, which is view GPS. It asks you if you wanted to view Sharon's GPS, and then it pops up with the coordinates. So it would appear my original mistake was in the WGS format that I originally used which put me out. In Locus Pro, in order to pick the correct WGS settings, we would go to the search function and then we would go move to, then we would go coordinates and then you would under WGS there are some options to pick from under world. The first is WGS after the decimal place is degrees and then there's WGS and after decimal place is minutes. That's the one you want because the way the radio shows it, it does have the four digits after the decimal place for the northing and as well there's four digits after the decimal place for the easting. So that would be the one that you would pick there, the second one down, and then you would stick in your coordinates accordingly and it'll get you to the correct location. So that's the way it's done. So now we're going to fall into a tree well with the Anytone and see if we can make something out of that. First of all, you would turn the up end alarm on, which would be function set. And then you hit the B or the C till you get to the setting you want. And that would be up and off. So we want to turn it on. We rotate the dial, hit enter. And now the up end alarm should be turned on. And I think we're on the same frequency here. So now we're going to take it out where it can see some satellites and upend it and see what we get. So the radio is sitting outside now, upended, and both on the same channel and now this is what's happening. It cycles through the alarm mode. You can see the D flashing for digital. So this appears to be a problem. And we know now that somebody has fallen into a tree well because we're hearing the alarm. And I can't make out what language that is. We'll now um, go and get our virtual person out of the tree well and then check the inbox for messages and see what we've got. Now that we've received the alarm from the other radio, we know that somebody was upended. Now we're going to find out who they are and what it was by going in to the menu system and you go to your inbox by scrolling through the B and the C keys and then to enter the inbox you hit the enter key and there's what we have message number one in Chinese I, I suppose those are Chinese coordinates I don't know not even that's not even Chinese that's Chinese mixed with uh, some ASCII and some other graphics characters so this is variable. I have had it where it has sent me some coordinates and I think what I'm going to do is uh, try again and uh, see if we actually do get coordinates and then see how good the coordinates are. But you can see already the problems with using digital mode 
with the up end alarm on here and there you just saw the screen timeout. So even if we were looking at coordinates they would have disappeared on us and I believe the timeout settings on this radio are already set at their max. So I'm going to try this again. So now we've got a different phenomena going on. I've redone the up end alarm. I can just hear it outside alarming. You can see the signal coming in full strength but on audio we have nothing. So before we had a voice that we couldn't understand and now we have uh, no alarm that we can hear audibly. Again this seems to be unique to the digital mode on this radio. So uh, I just checked again and it doesn't appear as though the radio that's outside has still acquired any satellites and that could be part of the problem as well because I just checked the inbox and it's the same thing. So I will go and see if I can uh, ascertain if the outside radio has been able to get any satellites and then try for a final time to see if we have any better luck with the inbox. So now I thought we'd take this party on the road and see how these units all do with satellite acquisition from the time they're powered on. We'll start with the TYT and for good measure here we will add an inReach to the equation and see how that one makes out. You can hardly see it. So you'll have to take my word for it. I can hardly read it outside. Well, that one's not going to work. The battery's too low. We'll add an any tone. Then we'll power up the other TYT. And then the other Anytone. And so you can see here. So these are all in the process of trying to find satellites now. And I'm going to grab the phone that was left inside so it wouldn't get any satellites and see what starts showing up. It looks like uh, 25 satellites and uh, 21 of them are acquired accuracy 3 meters which is what we were getting with the TYT yesterday. And so that's where we're at now. 19 satellites now out of 24 on the radio. We still don't have it on the TYT on either of them. And I'm going to, so in order to find out what you've got for satellites, you go menu, Sorry, I can't get this on screen here. Utilities. And then uh, RX GPS info. And see, we still don't have any GPS info yet. So it is taking these guys longer to pick up the satellites. Now I'm going to try the Anytone. The Anytone is function set and then you use the B or the C to scroll up. So the Anytone has picked up satellites. Now I will try the TYT also is now showing that it's picked them up. So if I go to menu utilities and then GRX GPS info hit confirm it's saying no GPS info still if I go back and go to GPS Beidou info it is giving me the satellites so it has acquired them there 
and if I compare the readings on it, the northing and the west are not the same on the two. So I'm going to have to go and take the Anytone in again and see what happens. So it looks like the Anytone and the TYT are both picking up satellites at about the same time period. And now I'm going to get a chance here to look up the Anytone, give it another chance and see how it did for accuracy or whether it got us all wrong. Well on the Anytone, the one on the left refuses to pick up any satellites or give us any GPS info so it might be a problem with the radio. The one on the right did pick up and after I gave it a while the coordinates changed and got us to within about 80 meters of where we are so far so it kept getting closer and closer. There may be some sort of hope for it but in the meantime the TYT got us to within three meters. You'll also notice on the Anytone on the left you'll see that the one that can't pick up the green LED on the upper left hand corner it keeps flashing and on the one that is picking up it consistently flashes the orange LED. So that must be their way of signaling when you've got satellites and when you don't. Now that we know the difference between them, I'm going to try and upend the one that can acquire satellites and see what it does send out. That does seem to be working better. Now we'll check messages and see what it actually received. So in the inbox we have one message and it is still showing us those same those same characters that we had before. One last thing before I leave this climate is I did say that it worked for alarming on analog as well and the unfortunate part of that is, is it doesn't send out any GPS coordinates or identify the sending radio. However, it does uh, work effectively. You get a good loud signal and I'll demonstrate it here. I've got a channel called Tree Analog. just means it's on analog VHF and when the one on the right over here, if I tip it, you can hear that's a nice loud sound and it does indicate that someone's fallen over and if I shake it I'm not getting much for it's not triggering the alarm so that should mean you can ski through a moderate range of motion there. This one's set fairly tight for, like if you fell even upside down, you would then trigger the alarm. But you can move it through that range. Excuse my fumble. And it's right about there that this is set for. So there's the alarm function on the Anytone. The one redeeming feature of that one, it doesn't require the GPS involvement. Okay, I guess it's time to wrap this party up. So let's summarize. We've got the TYT radios here and here, and the Anytones there and there in the middle. 
the TYTs are the only real contenders for the GPS functionality that we've been reviewing. The Anytone's clunky drill down menu system, the short screen time ups, or I should say, sorry, the short screen time outs, and very apparent firmware problems mean the version we've tested here is not really ready for prime time. If they could get this sorted out, however, this radio would have great potential for first responders in the event of a ski or tree well event. The TYT MD390 strength would be for locating a missing or lost party member. That member can either trigger an alarm or use the lone worker function to remind them to check in at a preset interval. You can also use the radio to query the radio's location and get the GPS coordinates even if the party member isn't conscious. In future videos, we'll test this unit to see how well it does when buried under the snowpack, as for example, when in an avalanche. This could help minimize the initial grid search area for the hasty search phase of the initial responder's role. The TYT also has a better color screen and the menu system is easy and intuitive to navigate, much more so than the Anytone. Don't think you can replace a radio with a spot or an inReach. When you're skiing in a national park, you can count on getting help in an hour sooner by calling dispatch on a radio rather than doing a spot or inReach activation. And this is based on real world documented experience. In places where you can communicate with the outside world via radio, there is no question they are much more effective and reliable than satellite communicators. So, until next time, ski well and avoid tree wells. Talk anymore